Thank you um, for the invitation to Ishermo and Paula. I'm going to present the data of our study group of antifovolipid syndrome. Uh, there is a limited data available about uh, Argentina patients with antifofolipid antibodies and antifofolipid syndrome, and currently most of the information on APL comes from international publications or small reports for single centers. So with the aim of increasing the knowledge about people of, with APL in Argentina, the first registry of APL was created in 2019 coordinated by the APS study group with the support of Argentina Society of Rheumatology. The objective of our group is to describe the sociodemographic, clinical, and serological characteristics and the evolution and prognosis of patients with APL in Argentina. This is an observational, retrospective, and prospective multicenter and multidisciplinary study group with longitudinal follow-up. 54 researchers from 26 centers across the country are participating in this group. The data collection was carried out through the online platform Artros Web, and we have baseline and annual visits. Baseline visits are developed with cumulative retrospective data, and annual visits are currently up to two years of follow-up. A data control committee was created to evaluate the data collected with the aim of improving the final quality of the information. Our inclusion criteria are patients with presence of positive APL, higher than 40 GPL or MPL in at least one determination, or levels between 20 to 40 GPL or MPL in at least two separate determinations 12 weeks apart or presence of lupus anticoagulant or new APL in at least one determination. In this Congress, we will going to present this baseline uh, and follow-up uh, update of our patients. We include 329 patients. As, as we see, 85% of the patients were female, uh, and the age at the inclusion was 41 years. Mestizo was present in 46% of the patients. In regard of diagnosis, 39% uh, of patients was primary APS, 27 patients uh, was associated with other autoimmune disease, and 1% uh, catastrophic APS. In regard of manifestations, 35% were thrombotic APS, 29 obstetric APS, and 12 APL without clinical manifestation and 10% APL with non-criteria manifestations. As, as you see, the most frequent manifestation for, was um, venous thrombosis, and in regard of APL distribution, in 63% of the patients, lupus anticoagulants was positive. And we have follow-up. At BC1, one, at one year of follow-up, 106 patients continued their follow-up, their follow six patients died, and two venous thrombosis events was recorded. In BC2, 68 patients continued their follow-up, and one patient died. In regard of COVID-19 infections, uh, 26 patients had the infection, and 80, 82 patients were vaccinated in, in this period. Mild adverse events were described with no association with thrombotic events. And ha what have we learned about AG GAPS? Uh, we performed a study to evaluate the performance of A GAPS score in patients with primary and those with associated APS. From 143 patients, 40% was associated APS with more frequent presentation of hypertension, arterial thrombosis, and higher HGAPS score. And in conclusion, the, in the analysis of HGAPS score in patients with primary APS and associated APS, we did not find a significant association in the development of thrombotic manifestation and obstetric morbidity. What have we learned about obstetric APS in our registry? This study was presented uh, last year, and um, the objective is to describe maternal and fetal manifestations in women with obstetric APS. From uh, six, uh, 72 obstetric patients, 27% was associated with IPS, 
and only 70% of pregnancies were planned with their physicians. In this Congress, we will present this study with, uh, with um, objective to evaluate maternal and fetal outcomes in patients with obstetric APS. From 61 events, more than 78% uh, of, uh, of patients have live births. 49% uh, presented at least one maternal and fetal complications. About treatment, we performed a study that also presented in this uh, Congress to estimate the compliance of 219 EULA recommendations from primary and secondary thrombotic prophylaxis in this real-life cohort. And in conclusion, these recommendations were modeladly applied for primary and secondary prophylaxis with better execution in groups of arterial and venous thrombotic events. And what we have learned about damage in SILE. We performed this study, this is a collaborative study between APS and SILE study group to evaluate the impact of APL profiling damage with, um, in patients with SILE. More than 1,600 um, 1, patients was included, 27% meet classification criteria of APS, and we find 40, uh, 64 patients presented damage of these patients. And we found that patients with negative APL have lower median of index, uh, damage index than patients with positive APL, and also a single double or triple positive APL was associated with the percent of damage. Our group have limitations. We have missing data, lack of follow-up, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic period. The laboratory determinations are not centralized. Study performed not yet published in lack of funding of researchers. Our next steps is to report the baseline and follow-up data from our study group develop more, uh, more lines of research, increase prospective follow-up at included patients, incorporate new centers and researchers, and collaboratively work with other international registry. As in summary, this is our study group that started in 2019 with 162 patients and 20 research. Now, three years later, we have 329 patients, two years of follow-up, 54 researchers, and as you see, our study group is small, but it's active as, and is growing. Thank you.